On this edition, we're talking about new babies, new buildings, DIY installations, and where in the world have I been and what you can expect from CMD in the future. Welcome to another edition of Church Media Design TV Tips, Tricks, and How To For You, the Church Media Designer. I'm your host, Brad Zimmerman, and I am joined, as always, by my favorite bobbleheaded friends. You got it right. We got Jamie and Adam from the Mythbusters. We got Dwight Troop from the office. We got little Whitey, the minister version of me. And of course, Jesus Christ, the Son of the Lord Most High. Well, CMD is back, as you can see, and first and foremost, I want to say thank you to everyone who sent in encouraging emails and tweets and comments while we were gone. Um, it was so great to get those, and uh, for all of you who are wondering why we were gone, one of the biggest reasons that CMD fell down my priority list was the birth of our daughter. Um, our little Valentine, Ellie Marie Zimmerman, was born on February 14th, and she is just amazing. She's the love of my life, and she's the cutest little girl in the world way cuter than any of your kids. Now, I'm, sure, I'm sure you guys think that about your own kids. But um, yeah, Ellie is just awesome and it's been a huge change for us. The other thing that happened while my wife was pregnant, um, our church actually purchased our very first facility and we were renovating that facility. And our first Sunday morning in the facility was three or four days after our daughter was born. So it was a very crazy time of life. And I actually put all of my design work on hold and kind of just said, hey, is it okay if I just work on the facility, help it get done as fast as it can. And we worry about videos and graphics and all that stuff later. So I learned a whole bunch of new stuff about construction and all that sort of thing. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about building walls and two by fours. And no, we're not talking about that. We're actually going to be talking about DIY audio installations and video installations and how you can install stuff into your facilities for cheaper and better and kind of what I used. And I'm sure there's a lot of better ways to do it, but this is what I did. But before we do that, we're gonna just talk quickly and briefly about things that are changing around here at CMD. Now to give you a little backstory, CMD started in 2008 and back then, you know, we had a flash website and video podcasting was a new thing. Now, fast forward to 2012 and a lot has changed. Flash is dead, of course, and well, or pretty much dead. And video podcasting still around, but it's not quite as popular. YouTube is huge, and we now have YouTube series and channels and all that stuff. And uh, live streaming is a whole new big behemoth that's going on. And so a lot has changed. So we're going to be changing the way CMD is done. So the first and biggest way we're doing it is by streamlining the video podcast and actually stripping out a lot of content that's already on the website. Now, if you haven't been checking out the website, the whole time the video podcast was kind of on hiatus, the website was still being updated daily with inspiration and news and freebies and articles. And all of that content has been going on on the website and that's gonna to continue to happen. So this video podcast is just gonna be about those tips, tricks, and how-tos, and all that other content will be on the website. The other thing that's changed is I actually host another show on creationswap.com that also is put on my website uh, called Church Media News, where I cover all of the latest news that matters for people working with church media. And so you can check out all of that news content there in a monthly uh, show that's pretty, I think is a pretty good show. The other thing is where you watch the show. We're on Vimeo, we're on the website, we're on iTunes and Miro for podcast feeds, as well as we now have a YouTube channel. So you can check out our and subscribe to our YouTube channel. So if you're a YouTuber, make sure to check that out. All 136 episodes um, are on YouTube, so you can check them out on YouTube. So YouTube, I just said it a bunch of times. I'm not gonna say that word anymore. So those are just a few different ways that you can subscribe and follow the content of CMD. So let's talk about system installations and how you can do it yourself. You can see here our new facility, and it previously was a boat show floor and repair center. And one thing you'll notice is there are a ton of windows. 
In the future, we'd like to cover those windows with like motorized shades or something. So if you know anybody who does that sort of thing, please let me know, I'd love to get a quote from them. But for right now, this kind of proves problematic for video. In the past, we had a two screen setup that was rear projected. And when we moved in the facility, we decided we needed more brightness, so we went to a dual projector setup for one screen. And when we first started, we were still using our rear projection screens, but front projecting on them because we couldn't get the distance behind and all that sort of thing which works, but it doesn't really work that well. So I thought back to when I was at the Create Conference in Canada this past summer, and the guys up there actually built their own screens out of Coroplast. Now that's that corrugated plastic. And uh, Adam Fry actually posted on his website a DIY how-to steps of building a corrugated uh, Coroplast, corrugated plastic screen. And so I actually went and found those instructions and some tips from somebody else online, and I built our own 12 foot wide, seven foot tall um, Coroplast screen. And it looks awesome. Nobody could ever tell that we built it ourselves. And um, the reason I did this is because when I looked into what it would cost to get a front projection screen, it was like $1,000. And I built this Coroplast screen for a hundred bucks. So super cheap and really, really easy. So that's what we did on the video side. So next, when we installed our audio gear, um, I started doing some research. Again, I'm not an audio guy. You might have better suggestions for me, but this is kind of what I did and wanted to pass the information along. So we had a 100 foot snake that we had been using in our, our setup tear down, you know, mobile church setup for the last seven years, but that wasn't long enough and what we wanted to do was different. So I started looking into new snakes. Now a new snake uh, cable without the ends and all that stuff was crazy expensive. So what I would recommend to do is go buy thousand foot spools of audio cable. You can get them for under a hundred dollars. Um, I went with West Penn cabling and then we actually just cut them to length and bundled them together with zip ties and ran them across the room. And this saved us tons and tons of money. We ran a 24 channel snake with uh, 24 ins, eight outs, and then two dedicated lines for our front of house speakers. And before we started all of this, I had no idea how to do soldering. By the end of this, I didn't know how to do soldering. That was quite the, the couple days worth of soldering adventures with a buddy of mine. Um, and so we, you know, that's how we did our snake solution. Now, when we got up to the stage, we actually ran floor pockets in the stage. Now, our floor pockets are from Ace Backstage, and they have four ins, one out, and then a blank spot for any future connectors we wanted, as well as power. Now, for all of the connectors and the power in the pocket, you can do that all for like under $200 a pocket. And uh, one thing that we did, partially because of code, but also to help future-proof us, is we actually ran two lines of conduit to every single pocket. We ran all of our cabling in one line to get ourselves started, and then we have a whole nother empty line of conduit for any cabling we wanna run in the future to use in that uh, empty spot, or for if we wanted to redo all the cabling with fiber optics or you know whatever we wanted to do, we have that empty line there to help us out for the future. Now all of those lines of conduit run into a closet and I knew that we needed to have some sort of patch bay so that we didn't end up having to always run certain things into certain floor pockets in the stage. And I looked into different patch bay solutions and again they came back way more expensive than what I could afford. So what I did is I started doing research and Ace Backstage also sells wall plates that you can configure with any um, connectors that you want. And I found their biggest one was an eight gang wall plate that actually has 16 different connector slots in it. So I bought two of those and then I just lined them up with all the connectors I wanted and all of the lines from the booth come into those uh, wall plates. And then out of the stage, we just go to regular XLR connectors and then we just do it like an old phone patch bay that we take this line from this pocket and just plug it into this input in the wall. And that's how we did our patch bay. It's really cheap, really easy, and it works really well for us. Now, since we didn't have a company helping us with the audio installation, I had to figure out where to buy all this stuff from. And I ended up using fullcompass.com. There's a bunch of different websites out there but full compass has really competitive prices and actually in the show notes I list out all of the different products that we bought so you can go check those out if you're interested in uh, any of that gear 
Now, if you guys have any other questions or comments or you want to you know, go in depth more on building that screen or how to solder, or you even have some suggestions on how to save money when doing audio installations or video installations, make sure to go leave those in the comment on the uh, episode show notes page. It's the best place to leave all of that stuff so that we can share it with all the community, especially if you have those suggestions. Those would be great. The other thing I want to encourage you guys to do is go over to cmd.tv slash subscribe and you could subscribe to the website feed where we have all those freebies and inspiration and all that stuff going on or head over to YouTube and subscribe to our channel there or Vimeo, all those different places that you guys can subscribe to. But that's all for this edition. So as for me and my favorite bobbleheaded friends, we're saying see you later.